why are random YouTubers from these big channels setting their sights on Martin Fitzwater and going on the warpath? What's going on, everyone? You're watching Strength Addicts on all social media platforms powered by Iron Mag Labs. Make your mark with IML. Visit them today at ironmaglabs.com today. You know, I got to tell you something, folks. I don't understand why the big YouTubers like Nick Strength and Power and Ivan Bodybuilding have decided to wage war on Martin Fitzwater. You know what? Martin Fitzwater doesn't bother anybody, doesn't talk trash about anybody. And now you got Ivan Bodybuilding saying that his biceps doubled or tripled in two years' time and having the people on this comment section accuse the Martian of SEO use, basically of putting like a synthol-like product in his biceps. I mean, this is after the guy gets robbed in New York. And let's talk about New York. You know, he beat Nick Walker. But you got a guy like Nick Strength and Power saying, you know, Nick wasn't off, but he was still being pushed by a guy who hadn't qualified for the Olympia until winning the Detroit show. I mean, like, that kind of commentary is just so unnecessary. Like, you're basically saying, oh my gosh, look, Nick didn't look bad at all, and this nobody here was pushing him. I mean, that's basically what you're saying. You're not saying anything positive about Nick's physique or Martin's physique, but what you are saying is that, you know, Nick wasn't off, and this guy, who nobody's ever heard of, was still pushing him. That's what you're saying. So it's not like you're saying Nick's physique is better than, than this guy's, but, but you know, you're not saying anything positive. You know, you're not saying anything positive about Martin. You're just saying, look, his only claim to fame is he won a show with six people. And let's talk about Detroit. You know, Detroit was a really good show, right? The problem is nobody wanted to do it. But it was a good show. It was a great venue. It had a great amount of vendors. So it had like an expo. You know, it, it had a great venue. Like like the place where it was held at was fantastic. And there was like big names in it. I mean, Fuad Abiyad, Bro Chat, you know, Hostile Subs, you know, that's like the promoter of the show, you know, and it's Detroit. I mean, Detroit is the muscle city. Ron Love is from Detroit, you know, I mean, the original powerhouse gym is in the Detroit suburb. Okay. I mean, it's like, that is fertile bodybuilding ground, but only six guys competed. So when he says he, he is only qualified once for the Olympian, it was at Detroit. The way he says it, it's like you, you qualified in a show with six people like, you know, so But the thing is, he didn't just qualify to show with six people or five people counting himself or six people counting himself. He almost won the New York Pro. And in my opinion, he did win the New York Pro. You know, but then, but then, you know, you want to not make me into a fanboy, right? You don't want, you know, because look, I've been a fanboy or whatever, the equivalent of a fan, a hardcore fan, you know, of Martin Fitzwater, Sean Roden. Brandon Curry, William Bonac. I am an active hardcore. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'm a fanboy, but I'm, I am probably William Bonac's biggest fan right now that I'm also a writer for ironmagazine.com. I also have strength addicts on all of our platforms, which I can hit a million people in a month's time. And that sounds, doesn't sound like, wow, compared to some of these big YouTube channels can do it in 10 minutes, <clears throat> but I can do it in a month's time in a month's time. I can get a million people to see my content, uh, you know, whether they're just seeing the front, you know, like the headline, which is powerful, uh, the, a picture or something that will actually read my stuff, maybe 10,000, 20,000, let's be realistic, but that's still something. And, and if you even have a hundred people looking at your stuff and it makes a reaction and they tell people, then it's still going to like, you know, go crazy. Now, aside from what I can see and what I know Robert DiMaggio, owner of Iron Mag Labs and IronMagazine.com. Iron Mag Labs is Strength Addicts title sponsor. So those of you that make the connection, he owns them both. He owns Iron Magazine and Iron Mag Labs. He's a very, very successful businessman. But what I want to say is, is he knows what Iron Magazine gets because he can see it. And Iron Magazine gets a lot of views. And I have nearly 800 articles with IronMagazine.com. So I mean, you know, I'm just saying, I know that when I say something, it gets heard. And um, I think that for what it's worth, Martin won the New York Pro. And everybody that had contact with what I write, say, whatever, they know that too. 
but let's let's remove myself from the situation right and let's go to more unbiased people i give you one better let's not go to more unbiased people let's go to people that really toe the line people that are really in the good graces of the ifbb that really are are in the orbit of the president because a lot of people like to say Oh yeah, I'm I'm big in Pittsburgh because they took a picture where one of the Mannings was in the background somewhere, you know, or Gary or Big Steve were somewhere in the background. No, I'm talking about the people that are really in the mix. Sean Ray, Bob Chicarillo, 100% definitely in the mix, and not just with say Jake Wood or just with Arnold, but with everybody, especially with Pittsburgh. And so they said that if you do the math, it gets, it gets confusing or something like that because they gave the posing a tie, the muscularity to Nick, but then they gave the structure to Martin, the symmetry to Martin, the balance to Martin. So they basically, it was like a three to one with a tie. So that's Martin all day and night. And they actually did a podcast about this and that caused shockwaves throughout the fitness industry because like I said, we're not even talking about an unbiased. We're talking about, so it's like like me over here being the hardcore fan, right? Then the unbiased here, and then the Federation people here. So it went from me on this end saying Martin should have won to them on that end saying Martin should have won. And so now you've got this situation where, you know, you, you, you can't really even raise an eyebrow when you say uncrowned New York Pro Champion because that's the consensus is that he won that show but he didn't get the win. So, you know, to me, it's just, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, to me, he's the uncrowned champion. You know what I mean? And I just don't understand why somebody that's the uncrowned New York pro champion, who's not complaining, who's not making a big fuss, who's not throwing shade at the guy that got the win because he didn't give himself the win. The judges gave him the win for whatever reason. And he's still getting attacked. He's still being, you know, ridiculed. He still has a YouTuber basically greenlighting his audience to run with the rumor that he has oil in his arms. Because that's what Ivan Bodybuilding did. He made all the suggestions. He laid them all out. And bam! Now people are, are accusing him of SEO use. He never said SEO use. He set it up. He's like the John Stockton in this situation with the assist. He gave his, his viewers the ball. They made the shot. What else were they going to do with the shot? You know, you, you know, you're a basketball player. John Stockton gives you the ball. What are you going to do with it? But shoot, he's giving it to you to shoot. It's a, it's a, it's like a guaranteed point. And uh, you know, to me, that's messed up. That's messed up to do that to a guy who, in two years, has turned his career around. But it's not because he's been putting oil in his arms. It's because he's working his ass off. You know, then. He wins a small show that could have been huge, but he wins a small show. Then he almost wins the third biggest bodybuilding show. He gets robbed. He's a good sport. He doesn't complain. He just keeps doing the business of bodybuilding. And now he's got to deal with these podcasters attacking him. Why? Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to take away every last bit of buzz that he's been able to get for himself on his own. Now, is someone telling them to do that? Or are they doing it on their own? That's an entirely different scenario, entirely different, you know, conversation for an entirely different video. But the bottom line is, you know, I feel like they're trying to make him a non-factor, maybe so that if he places poorly at the Olympia, people won't be too shocked. But the reality of the matter is, is these big YouTubers are setting their sights on the Martian for no apparent reason, and they have gone to war with him. And it's really, really getting to the point of no return because at some point he's going to have to say something, or maybe he won't. Maybe you guys will just get clicks off of ruining a good man's name.